Tell me about yourself. How I deal with conflict. Why dentistry? What is your greatest weakness? This is a question that can really make you stand out. How do you de-stress slash what do you do in your free time? I think I already wore this shirt. Oh. Ah, that was over a year ago, it's fine. Someone actually asked me where this watch was from. It was in the last video. It's called Filippo Loretti, and I think it looks great. It's interview season. That means you submitted your application months ago, and now you've been waiting, waiting. We already did this intro too. It's interview season. That means you submitted your applications months ago, you have been waiting. That's right guys, this is part two of the interview series for how to get into dental school. If you haven't checked out the top interview tips yet, make sure to check out that video at the end of this one. My name is Jack Hahn. I am a current D2 at University of California, San Francisco, otherwise known as UCSF. They give us these water bottles like the day that we get into UCSF because um, they're just that confident that we're gonna graduate. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the most common dental school interview questions and answers. And also to make it more fun, I brought on a few of my YouTuber influencer friends because they are all brilliant people and they can bring in a unique perspective to some of these questions. So let's all learn together. Imagine this, today is the big day. It's finally your interview and you know, you just sat down in front of this powerful, intimidating being, which is your interviewer. The reaction is usually really nice. Usually the first question that they're going to tell you um, to try and like settle you down as well is tell me about yourself. This is the most open-ended question that you're going to get in your entire interview, and there's so many avenues you can take this. I would start with the basics, where you're from, what college you went to, where you grew up, and then throughout the interview, they're going to ask you, you know, why did you choose dentistry and why did you choose this school? So what I suggest is touching on some dentistry aspects, letting them know which extracurriculars you've been involved in. What you really wanna do is play to your strengths because a lot of times what I found is that the interviewer is going to follow up on one of the things that you mentioned in the tell you about myself answer. So talk about things that interest you and try and connect with the interviewer. So for me, I would say that my name is Jack Khan. I went to Clark University in Western Massachusetts and I was a biochemistry and molecular biology major. I was actually born in Beijing and then grew up in Canada. So I am a Canadian citizen, but have lived in California for the last eight years. I started a pre-dental club and I organized a fundraiser during college and usually in my spare time I like to play tennis and also work out and just hang out with friends. Then boom hit the interviewer with your really fun fact. Mine would be like I love creating YouTube videos, uh, having a creative outlet, being able to learn about filming and editing and how to put a story together in a video format really excites me. Show your excitement and your enthusiasm when you answer questions, especially when you're talking about things that you like and things that you like about dentistry and their school as well. What's up guys, I'm Joel. I've been a dentist for six years now and I also have my own YouTube channel where I talk about dentistry and personal finance. I'm gonna be answering the question, how I deal with conflict. So I'm certainly not perfect at this and it's something that I'm always trying to get better at, but I found one of the best techniques to dealing with conflict is to try and take the other person's perspective, quote, kind of putting yourself in their shoes. It's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. And why I found this has been beneficial is that it's very easy, especially in an emotional state, to kind of get your blinders on and just see your perspective. And if I'm trying to deal with that conflict effectively, I'll want to understand where the other person is coming from because maybe I'm in fact incorrect and I certainly have been guilty of having a perspective and then turned out that I was wrong. So under trying to truly understand where they're coming from has helped me to sometimes even eliminate conflict because I realize that I'm in the wrong. But if I still believe that I have a valid point and I want to try and convince the person of my point and why they might need to reconsider, now I have more of a another tool in my tool belt to do so because I'll be able to better understand where they're coming from, maybe what some of their concerns are, and see how I can talk with them and hopefully allow us to bridge the gap between where I am and where they are. Um, and additionally, just giving them an opportunity to talk really is beneficial, just allowing someone else to feel like they're being heard and I'm considering what it is that they're saying, which I genuinely would be. 
Joel has made many programs and is actually on the core team of DAT Bootcamp. One course that Joel made that actually fits really well with this video is called Roadmap Prep. Roadmap Prep is an amazing resource that was made to help you ace your interview. There's over two hours of free videos, example responses, and question teardowns. I'm going to link the website in the description below, and once you made it through all the free content, then go ahead and use my code JackConSmiles for 20% off the rest of the course if you're interested. I've also been giving a lot of mock interviews to Predent, so if you want personalized help, hit up my email. I'd be glad to talk to you and interview you and help you. For a lot of these questions, including why dentistry, you wanna develop some sort of story. You wanna take them along the journey that you went through so they can fully understand why you did choose dentistry. For me, I would have said something on the lines of, you know, I actually didn't know I wanted to go into dentistry until the summer after my freshman year of college. As a little kid, I always knew that I wanted to help people and go into healthcare, but I had no idea exactly which field I wanted to go into. The first field I looked more into was actually medicine, so I volunteered in the hospital ER when I was a senior in high school. And from each of these experiences, I definitely learned something. So when I started volunteering in the ER, I realized that I didn't really enjoy the atmosphere. It was at times very depressing. Sometimes patients would come in or have a disease or infection that would be really hard to treat and sometimes not treatable. If someone had terminal stage four cancer, then there's really nothing you can do in order to cure that person and I found it really depressing having to tell a mom that her son was dying or just passed away. I couldn't see myself doing that. In dentistry what I love is that whatever problem there is, uh, you're always able to help them or fix that problem. So if someone came in and they wanted to whiten their teeth for a set of case, you can go ahead and do that. If someone accidentally chipped their tooth, then you can put a filling or crown on it. If someone came in missing teeth, then you can put like a partial denture or a full denture. And if you didn't know how to do that, you could always recommend them over to another specialist or another dentist that would be able to help them. I'm overall a very positive person and having that positive outlook on the prognosis really sits well with me. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine and I am a D3 at ASDO, that's Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health. So today I get to talk about what I think is one of the toughest interview questions and that is, what is your greatest weakness? I think this is a great opportunity for you to show that you are invested in your own personal growth and you've thought about some of your weaknesses and how you're going to improve them. So my greatest weakness is that I have a hard time saying no to someone who is asking for my help. And this really came to light with me when I was working as a dental assistant and I would get asked all the time to pick up shifts if people couldn't make it or pick up extra tasks. And I just loved being the person who said yes and who would help in any situation. But I soon realized that this would cause a problem because it was getting in the way of my work-life balance. I think it's great to be compassionate and want to be helpful and it's a great quality to have in a dentist. But for me, I really had to take a step back and start thinking about how I was going to set boundaries. After experiencing that, I made a change and now when somebody asks for my help or something that I would have to work into my schedule, I respond honestly and I say, you know, I'd love to help, I'd love to do that. Let me just look at my schedule and make sure I have the time to do that. So when you're thinking about how you're gonna answer this question, even if you are talking about a weakness, make sure that you have thought about how you are gonna make improvements. That just shows that you're self-reflective, you know, nobody is perfect, but it's a great opportunity to show that you're invested in your own personal growth. So I hope that helps. This is a question that can really make you stand out and gives you the opportunity to talk extra highly about yourself. So make sure you have a good example here. When I was asked this question, I started talking about my research. I did research at two different schools over the summer at UCI and then also one semester at Clark University. Basically what I was doing at Clark University was synthesizing, synthesizing, yeah synthesizing, synthesizing a chemical compound in this grand scheme mechanism in order to eventually improve drug delivery. The protocol that I followed was actually very frustrating because a lot of the steps did not have a detailed description of exactly how to do that 
technique or exactly you know how to use this machine. I was still lost when following this protocol. That means I had to ask for help a lot. Um, sometimes the people that I do research with and sometimes even the head faculty that I was doing research under. I felt as if the whole process was not that efficient and there's definitely a lot of improvements that could be made. So at the end of my research period, over the summer actually, I emailed the person that I was doing research under and asked if I could update the protocol, if I could rewrite it in a more clear way so that the people after me that would be doing the exact same thing that I was would have an easier time and be able to synthesize more of that chemical compound. He said yes, I ended up updating the protocol, I sent it back to him and he told me the next semester that it has been going a lot smoother in lab and he had extra time as well to do what was important for him. Uh, oh, hold on one second. I'm just texting an international YouTube star. All right, send. Okay, that was Jack Hong. Hello, my friends. My name is Steven, and I am a second year dental student at UTHSC in Memphis, Tennessee. And I have been approached by my good pal, Jack Hong, to answer a tough interview question today. And that is the question of how do you de-stress slash what do you do in your free time? And I actually really like this question because I think if an interviewer asks you this question, what they're really trying to do is to learn a little bit more about you outside of school and your other pre-dental experiences. This is literally your chance to talk about the thing that you know best in this life, which is your own self. And in this answer, you can really talk about things that you enjoy doing outside of school, whether it's watching movies, whether it's doing art or singing or playing sports, everybody has unique things that we do. For example, I love to make YouTube videos and that's something I do. And you have something about you that makes you unique. So if you're open and honest with this question and you give the interviewer an honest look at kind of your life outside of school, you never really know where this conversation will take you. And it's a great way to connect with your interviewers and to appear as a more personable person overall in your interview. An example of this is on my UT interview, I was actually asked this question, and at the time I was really into woodworking. So I answered honestly, and I told the two professors that I was interviewing with that I was super into woodworking. We ended up talking about it for like multiple minutes. It was a good chunk of my interview, which was super surprising to me. And it was just a great way to connect with the two gentlemen that I was speaking with. It's one of those things where I would have never expected this massive interview to be talking about something like woodworking. So be honest, be open, and answer truthfully. I promise this is an easier question than it might seem, and it really is just a good opportunity to talk about yourself. Best of luck on your dental school interviews, my friends, and remember to subscribe to Jack Han, who makes the best pre-dental videos on this entire website. And here's my reaction to those outrageous comments. Now you know how to answer the most common dental school interview questions, but make sure to check out my top tips before your interview because one of these tips could be the make it or break it in terms of getting into the dental school of your dreams. It should be right on my face right now, so go ahead, click my face, well click where my face was, click that video that is on top of my face right now. Go, 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 go.